so here is your very first lab of the year, and we're going to start with a blank space. We're going to put all of our stuff in it. You're going to get your own stuff, and I'm going to walk you through what it is that you need to do. Your pre-lab is just to simply write down what materials and chemicals we're going to be using, and then also to write down whatever safety precautions you think need to be followed for this lab. So, the first step, setup for the li liquid says, from the back cabinets obtain 25 mil graduated cylinders and two 50 mil beakers. So, two 50 mil beakers and a 25 mil graduated cylinder. It also says get three pipettes. And it says from the lab station drawer get a 12 volt pipette or 12 volt plate and a glass stir rod. So here is our plate, and here is a glass stir rod. So this is the equipment that you'll need for the liquids part of it. First step says using the 25 milliliter graduated cylinder, measure 14.5 mils of the blue solution. So also on your lab table, it'll already be in here when you get set up, will be a, a much smaller than this, a small beaker of blue solution. And it says we need to get 14.5 milliliters. So I'm going to pour this in until I get to 14.5. Ooh, I kind of went over a little bit. That's where pipettes come in handy. And I'm going to remove until I get to 14.5. Right about there. And remember, we read from the bottom of the meniscus. This is now going to be our blue pipette, so I'll just save that for later. So 14.5, pour it into the 50 mil beaker. Then it says rinse your 25 mil graduated cylinder and add 5.5 mils of the yellow solution. So again, I'm going to add 5.5 milliliters. Again, big shocker of the day, I overshot it. So I'm going to use another different pipette and I'm going to remove the liquid until I'm at 5.5. go ahead and keep that in there so I can use it in just a second. And then it says add it to the 50 mil and then swirl to combine and you should get this very nice kind of teal green color. And there you go. If your color matches this, you did good. If not, you probably messed up on some measurements. So rinse it out again, which is what I just did. And 16 mils of the red solution. So here's our red solution. I'm going to get 16 milliliters. All right, so 16 mils of the red solution, pour it into the beaker. And now we gotta rinse our graduated cylinder again. Graduated cylinder rinse, next step says four milliliters of the blue solution. Add that to the red, swirl it around to see what you get. And there you go. Yes, I'm an Aggie. Yes, that's maroon. That's why I picked it. So hopefully your color matches something along these lines. All right, so part one of the lab is done. Hopefully your colors have matched up pretty well with mine. That shows that you have good liquid measuring and transfer techniques. Now we're going to move on to the micro scale techniques, which is where we need the 12 volt plate, our three pipettes, and our graduate or our glass stir rod. So I already have the yellow one slightly filled. This is the blue one that I used a second ago, so I'm going to use that to get some more blue solution. And then I'm going to use the one that I haven't used at all yet to get our red solution. And it says in the steps, the red 10 drops goes in well one. So here's well one. And it says five drops in well two. And seven drops in well six. Alright, I'm going to have uh, go ahead and get a close-up of this so that you can see how they're numbered. Alright, so here's a, hopefully maybe a little bit better of a shot of the 12 well plate. Kind of hard to see the numbers, I know. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We're only going to be using through 6, though. Um, and so now we've got our red drops in. Now we're going to add our yellow drops. It says put 5 drops in the second well. And 10 drops in well 3. And we want six drops in four. Then for the blue, it tells us four drops in number four. 
10 drops in number 5, and 3 drops in 6. Now it tells us to take our glass stir rod and stir each of the little wells. So obviously we don't have to do this one because it was just red. So I stirred that one. Make sure you clean off your stir rod in between. Alright, and what do you see? Purple's looking a little weird, but you should see a rainbow. Now for takedown, for cleanup, all you gotta do, all of these solutions can safely be poured down the sink and then simply clean and dry all of your equipment and you are done. All right, for the second part of this experiment, you're gonna be working with measuring and transferring solids and learning how to uh, light and adjust your Bunsen burner. So the first thing it says for the setup is to get a test tube rack. 10 milliliter graduated cylinder. In your drawers, get out a thermometer. Three scupulas. Scupulas are these little metal guys. And your balance. Make sure it's on. And then it says go up here to the teacher station and get yourself some weigh boats. So here's all that you need. On your desk, you will find small beakers filled with each of the three solids labeled uh, NaHCO3, also known as baking soda, and citric acid, right there, and calcium chloride, right there. Those are the three solids that we're going to be working with in this particular lab. So, get these out of the way so you guys can see what's going on. The first step says measure 1.3 grams of NaHCO3. Take your weigh boat, put it on your balance. You don't want this mass to come in and, and, and mess up your mass of your actual solid, so you're going to zero that guy out. Then we're going to take our sodium bicarbonate or sodium hydrogen carbonate or baking soda, clean scupula, and we're going to measure 1.3 grams. Yeah, that's close enough. 1.42. So kind of shake it all down to the bottom corner, pinch opposite corners, and you're going to take it and transfer it into a clean and dry test tube. And then this weigh boat goes in the trash. Step two says using a different weigh boat, again measure one gram of the citric acid. So I'm going to zero that out. Citric acid right here. Citric acid is the H3, C6H507. Sometimes it's written C6H807. You know, they're both fine. Get a different scupula, or you can clean the original one you had. We only want one gram here. Now I'm going to do the exact same process. Kind of shake it down to the bottom a little bit. And dump it into the original test tube, where I have the sodium bicarbonate ready and waiting. Now, the question asks, what happens? Well, that's kind of boring because nothing happened. Hmm, I wonder why nothing happened. One thing you'll learn in chemistry is that for stuff to happen, you need water, which is why the next uh, step says, well, first we've got to get the temperature of our distilled water. This little squirt bottle filled with distilled water, so I'm going to put my thermometer in there. So, 23 degrees Celsius is the temperature of my water. I'm now going to measure out 6 milliliters of distilled water from here. Nice little 10 milliliter graduated cylinder. We're not using the 25 mil on this one because the smaller the increments on your graduated cylinders, the more accurate and the more precise you can be, more precise, not accurate, more precise you can be in your measurements. Alright, so there's our 6 milliliters. Now I'm going to add that to my test tube and watch the fireworks begin. So once the reaction has gone on for a little bit, you now need to take the temperature again. Alright, so the new temperature reading is... 15 degrees Celsius. So we have lost 8 degrees right here just in doing this reaction. It's interesting. We'll talk about what kind of reaction that is later. Now the second reaction we're going to do 
involves calcium chloride. Let's go ahead and clean up our little mess here. And calcium chloride says we need one gram in another way boat. We go through way boats like crazy around here. Zero it out again. And we need to measure out one gram calcium chloride. All right, 1.02 works for me. And using the same solid transfer technique, pinch either side, put it in the test tube. And there you go. Now again, it says to add, I believe it was six milliliters, six and a half milliliters of distilled water this time. So adding six and a half mils in here, Hmm, that's not nearly as fascinating as the last one. But then the next step says to measure the temperature. Well, I need to clean my thermometer off from the last time. So our starting temperature is now going to be 22. And our final temperature is... And you can definitely feel the difference right down in here. So don't be afraid to, you know, touch it. And it looks like our final temperature reading for this one is going to be at 42 degrees Celsius. So kind of the opposite reaction of what we had going on with the citric acid and sodium bicarbonate. And we'll talk about both of these types of reactions in the future, but just wanted to give you, you know, what you get to expect in this class. So that is the two solid reactions that we wanted you to do. Next thing up is the Bunsen burner. All of those solutions from the solid part of it can be washed down the sink, followed up with lots of water, and then clean everything with soap and water because that citric acid gets really sticky. For the last part of today, you are going to learn how to use Bunsen burner. First thing is, how do you light it? Well, you want to take your Bunsen burner. This is the barrel. Close the barrel all the way and then open it just about half a turn, just a little bit. And then there's another um, little knobby thingy down here on the bottom. This actually controls the height of the flame, um, controls the amount of gas that gets into the flame. This controls the amount of oxygen that gets in. This controls the amount of, uh, I think it's methane that we have coming through here. Um, and so this, don't mess with this right now. Most of these are set pretty well where they need to be. If you light your Bunsen burner and you have a flame that is a measly little like two inches tall and you get the two foot flame then I'll come by and help you fix it but for right now we don't need to deal with this one so we've got that guy set up to light your Bunsen burner you'll call me over I'll tell you turn on the gas I'm gonna take my necklace off before I do this make sure my hair is all the way back and my goggles are on so turn the gas on light it and up it goes. And you'll see we have this yellow flame, which is the kind of flame you want for the first part of this experiment. It tells you then to get a pair of not rubber tipped tongs and take a clean, well, slightly clean, a dry, basically, evaporating dish. And you're going to hold it in the flame, in this yellow flame, for just a little bit. 30 seconds, minute, max. And the longer I hold it in there, the grimier it starts to look. Really good and dirty now. That's why we don't use a yellow flame. Then it tells us to adjust the flame by turning the barrel until you get the yellow goes away. You can start to hear the roar coming. And you get a nice blue flame. And eventually you'll start to see an inner cone take shape. That's when it'll really start to roar. And this is the flame that we'll want for most of our experiments. This is the hottest form of a Bunsen burner flame that we can get. If we didn't want one quite as hot, we could just lose that inner blue cone, still keep it blue, but now this flame without the inner blue cone is going to be a little bit cooler. Not much. It's still really hot, but it's definitely cooler than the inner blue cone. 